What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today I am not going to be reviewing this Lamborghini Aventador S because I am actually not the one wearing the camera. Hi. So today Jeroen is going to do the review of his own Aventador S and I'm going to let him tell you what he does and who he is. Enjoy the video. So thank you Max for that introduction and yes hello welcome from my side my name is Jeroen Mull I'm a professional racing driver working and racing for Lamborghini Squadra Corsa the motorsport department of Lamborghini this beautiful Italian supercar manufacturer I've been working with them and for them for six years now racing all around the world in their Lamborghini Super Trofeo Championship their GT3 Championship helping to develop the racing cars doing a little bit of development of the road cars as well being an instructor for all the Lamborghini customer driving programs like the Esperienza and Academia we do all around the world and today I am invited by the guys here at Auto Top NL to show you guys my Aventador S Roadster here in Nero Pegaso this beautiful metallic black color this is my personal car I've had uh, owned it for two years now here in the Netherlands and uh, I've spent over 17,000 kilometers now already with the car behind the wheel and I've enjoyed it extremely much. And I just want to show you around the car, tell you about the spec of this Aventador S Roadster, why I've chosen certain things, what I love about the car, some interesting details and some interesting features and quirks that you might not have known about this Aventador S Roadster. But as you may know, the Aventador S Roadster is the V12 flagship of Lamborghini currently with a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12 engine producing 740 horsepower. The car is all wheel drive as was also the previous Aventador. Uh, the car now has a four-wheel steering system, so the rear wheels also turn. This is the first time this is applied on a V12 model and was then also introduced on the SVJ, which is the more hardcore track-focused version of the Aventador, the S being the ultimate road-going version of the V12 flagship. Very well known for the scissor doors or the doors that go up, a feature that Lamborghini leaves only and reserves only for the v12 models so introduced with the Countach then on the Lamborghini Diablo after that the Murcielago and then the Aventador was introduced in 2011 this car is a 2018 car as I said two years old now in Nero Pegaso it's a beautiful black metallic color I felt it's a little bit understated for such a bold car but that was kind of the look that I want to go for and I opted to go with the SV design wheels in silver which in this which in this spec were introduced on the Aventador S for the first time I thought that it really enhances the stance of the car being in silver against the contrast of the dark exterior color furthermore i went for the full carbon fiber package on the exterior which means the lower splitter here in carbon fiber we have the carbon fiber side skirts alongside the car also new on the aventador s is the illuminated aventador logo in carbon fiber in the door sill as well you can see the carbon fiber tub being exposed as well this car having a carbon fiber monocoque chassis we have the big carbon fiber diffuser on the back as an option with the new aventador s design exhaust which if you can really see it actually has three pipes the bottom two are the fully open ones just with a catalytic converter but no muffler back box or um, sound deadening whatsoever so the full v12 glorious noise comes from those and when the valves are closed the exhaust valves only come from the top which means the car can be driven nice and comfortably on the road as well but we have the full carbon fiber diffuser there at the back then i also opted for the sv air ducts the intakes that were introduced on the sv for the first time and then were carried over onto the s as well for the road going version instead of the electronically opening air vents that were here on the first generation of entador and as an option i also went for the exposed carbon fiber roof panels which 
as this is an Aventador Roadster, as Roadster come off. So I thought, I thought that it would be interesting to show you actually how that works because these roof panels come off and they store here in the front of the car for you to take them with you when you're, whenever you're driving. So first thing you do is you pull on the latch that is here to open the front, then fold forward the seat, pull on the lever that is here and the roof lifts off and you just carry out the roof panel like this walk over to the front and you can store them here following the numbered system on the mounts that you can see here and uh, they just click in place like that fall down these features walk over to the other side Again, seat forward, grab out the panel and we store the panels here in the front very nicely and you're done they're all secured here in place granted you don't have much luggage luggage space left but what else do you need when you're driving a car like this interesting thing if you look closely it says here Aventador wind stopper the air in this poly um, in this this uh, this foam bar is actually two pieces of mesh that you can slide onto the top of the window frame and function as an extra wind deflector so definitely for longer journeys with the roof off like this that is uh, that is very much recommended to use but look at the car like this I mean I like the look of it when the roof is on we also have the full carbon fiber backed seats in the car but just the look of the car like this with the roof off is uh, is something that is so incredibly spectacular and also kind of brings me to what i love so much about this car because i am a very very lucky boy to be able and allowed to race proper racing cars as i said the lamborghini huracan gt3 evo and the lamborghini huracan super trofeo evo on racetracks all around the world and as good as a supercar for the road can be and even more track focused supercars for the road can be like an aventador svj or a lamborghini huracan performante which is also the track focused version it's never going to be as good as a full flexed racing car with racing slicks with a proper braking system built purposely for the racing industry with a car that is completely stripped lightweight with a proper racing seat roll cage sequential gearbox everything you need for a dedicated race car and as good as a road car can ever be and as fast as these cars can be and as good as they can be on a racetrack they're never going to hold a candle to a proper racing car and therefore for me a supercar for the road like this one needs to be fun on the road needs to be good on the road needs to be special on the road and on the road you have to take into account that you have speed limits you have just socially accepted driving you need to take care of everybody you need to make it safe and this car to me is just the biggest supercar sensation you can get at any speed that v12 let's show that v12 because we also went for the full carbon fiber spec on the engine bay that naturally aspirated v12 that is in this car the 6.5 liter dedicated aventador engine this car is or this engine is purposely built for this car on the factory production line in Sant'Agata bolognese and this is this is the heart of lamborghini and this is what this car what makes this car so exciting obviously it's connected to the lamborghini isr independent shifting rod patented gearbox a very big mouthful but everyone that has ever seen a review of an aventador or maybe has even been lucky enough to be in one drive one knows the the notorious and ferocious shifts that this isr single clutch paddle shift gearbox gives you in the Corsa mode the race mode in the back but it's also oftenly being seen as a little bit of um, 
dated technology compared to modern day dual clutch gearboxes. But to me, this engine and this gearbox belong together and they, they create the character of this car and make it such an incredibly exciting driving experience at all time. And especially when that roof is off and you can hear the full V12 roar, rumble, bangs, pops, scream out of this, uh, this exhaust. Interesting thing, by the way, that was also noted by Max earlier on, is that you can see that actually the engine is not dead center in the car. And there's actually a reason for that. And that is because this car is four wheel drive. The gearbox is in front of the engine in the center tunnel, basically between the passenger and the driver. So the gearbox is right there. Also the reason why an Aventador will never get a dual clutch gearbox because it just will not fit in the carbon fiber tub. This is completely designed for that ISR gearbox. But because the gearbox is in the front, there still needs to be an axle that goes to the back in order to drive the rear wheels. And if that axle would have gone right underneath the engine, the engine would have had, had to go higher up, which ruins the weight distribution. So they just moved it over a little bit so the axle can run basically next to the crankshaft and the engine can sit lower, but the engine does sit slightly left of center. So an interesting fact about this car. But anyway, I think that has been enough talk. It has been enough showing around. You guys want to see it. You guys want to hear it. And I just want to drive it. So let's just go for a little drive. So here we go for a little drive. Now we're still with the roof off, but it's starting to drizzle. So hopefully I can speed up enough in order not to have too much of this rain here. I've added the little wind deflector here to the top of the wind of the windscreen in order to reduce a little bit of the wind in the car because we're also going to do a little stretch on the Autobahn. But as I said, this car to me is all about the special feeling and the special experience that is driving a supercar and especially an Italian supercar like this Lamborghini Aventador. It's all about the noise and well, we just have a little overpass. There is just nothing out there that sounds like this. This naturally aspirated V12 is just an absolute dying breed. As some of the water comes in. But this, this car, this engine is just so unique. And, and as I said, a dying breed. The car has such an its own character. We're currently in um, in sport mode. Well, we're actually in ego mode. Ego mode is the fourth driving mode that was added to the Aventador with the S um, as this car is, which is basically an individual mode. It's a mode where you can uh, make your own combination of Strada, Sport and Corsa, Strada being comfort, Sport being fun for the road, but not too crazy, and Corsa being the hardcore track mode. You can make those three you can choose whatever you want for the three main parts of the car, the, the suspension, the steering and the drivetrain. And for me in Ego, I have the engine in Sport with the gearbox in Sport, which give these great blips on the downshift, give the big bangs on the overrun and have a nice throttles response. As water comes in my face but and I've set up the suspension and gear uh, the suspension and steering in Strada because for me that is just a nicer way of <laughs> those bags it's just a nicer way of, uh, of using the car on the road obviously when you really want to go for it on a racetrack you want Corsa mode you want the stiff suspension you want the more direct and a little bit more weighted steering feel but to me on the road this setting in ego is uh, is the best but we do have to experience a little bit of those Corsa upshifts because those 60 millisecond single clutch banging upshift you get from this ISR gearbox only come in Corsa mode. So here we go. <laughs> it never gets old. 
and that's exactly what I was talking about. This is the kind of car that always puts a smile on your face, even if you're driving slow. Obviously, I'm being a little bit of a unigan right now and, uh, and accelerating fast and stuff, but even when you're driving slowly, you're in this spaceship-like cockpit, and it's, it's just such a special place to be, even though the sat-nav is slightly dated, to say the least. I mean, nowadays we do have CarPlay here introduced with the Aventador S, which is uh, definitely a lifesaver with the older MMI system that is in this car from Audi. As we enter the Autobahn, let's see what happens. Obviously, we need to be careful with the slightly damp track and the roof being off makes it pretty windy. do things like these legally but that sensation is just ridiculous doing over 300 with the roof off wow at one point the wind noise takes over over the v12 rumble but what a sensational experience let's go for another little pull is just a racing racing engine enough especially as the rain is coming down harder and harder I'm definitely gonna try and find another place to stop Well, that took a little bit of an unexpected turn. Uh, the weather was constantly on the edge, but we didn't expect it to go and turn bad so much all at once. So, um, apologize for the little crude interruption, but I had to find some shelter to put the roof panels back on, but we survived. Luckily, by driving, most of the car stayed as dry as it could be, so it will dry. Anyway, coming back to my little personal experience review of this car. As I said, I've owned this car now for two years and uh, to me it is still, it, maybe it's not, or for sure, it's not the most refined driving machine. It's not the fastest car around a racetrack. Nowadays it's not even the fastest car on a straight anymore even though when the Aventador was launched it was definitely the king of launch control and the king of the 0 to 100 sprint but it is still definitely the king of supercar experience when driving it it is vastly wide it is a car that you always need to be aware of where you're taking it how you're driving it what things you're going to encounter 
But as soon as you hear that valve open in the exhaust, you know exactly why you pull up with all that stuff and why you don't care because it's just the best driving experience that you can have just the most special supercar driving experience that you can have and therefore it is still my very favorite supercar out there in the world even though I am obviously very very biased working for Lamborghini also comparing it to others in my personal opinion there is just nothing that can beat the road driving supercar experience on the road of this car and with that I want to end my guest review here with Autotop NL of my Aventador S Roadster. I really hope you enjoyed me being a guest. If you want to see more Lamborghini content or if you want to see more content that I make, go also to my personal channel. The guys will drop the link in the comment section or in the description down below. Go check that out. I'll try to make as many videos as possible of my racing, of my work with Lamborghini and everything that I get up to. Make sure to subscribe. To the Auto Top NL guys as well if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.